Hey folks, I'm Paul and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Um, today I thought I'd take a break from my uh, series on uh, building a, a sports car and uh, do a little fun project, um, which is building a uh, potato cannon, an air-powered uh, potato cannon. Um, I, I had this neat idea, or what I thought was neat anyway, to try and measure or calculate the muzzle velocity of a of a air cannon of a potato uh, air the air powered potato cannon and uh, well to do that we've got to uh, we got to have a got to have an air cannon so I thought I'd show you how I built mine there's some uh, there's some I think uh, serious safety concerns to be uh, to be to be worried about that uh, it keeps everybody safe so let's uh, well, let's get into some of that stuff and I'll show you how I built it um, and we'll have some fun with it. Like any uh, air cannon, uh, I mean, they all have um, a, uh, a a pressure chamber where the uh, air collects before it's uh, before it gets bl blown out into uh, out through the barrel. Um, so you, on one end, you have to have the connections to get uh, going from a regular air line. Um, somehow you got to get up to. Uh, I'm using a two inch PVC uh, air chamber here. Uh, somehow you got to get from here to here, and there's all different ways to do it. Um, but you got to just find it at your hardware store. The the uh, the fittings to get from from here to here. So that's that's one end of the chamber. At the other end of the chamber here is you got to get down to whatever is controlling you the the flow out of the out of the chamber. I'm just using a regular um, irrigation valve. Um, that I actually recovered from an irrigation system that I took apart. Um, it's just an old valve that I had. And uh, then this controls the flow. And once you power this and the air flows out, out of this end and through the tube and fires your, your, your potato projectile uh, out the other end there. As I was saying, the valve that I used to, to, to control the flow of the air is just regular... Um, regular irrigation valve. You can get these at any big box store. And like I said, I've recovered these from a from a you know irrigation system I I took to, I took apart. But you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. Um, I would go either either get them the normal ones you find or either either um, uh, uh, three quarter inch size or one inch. I I tr try to pick pick a bigger one. I think the three quarter will probably work. But I I wanted as Quick airflow as I could get. Obviously, you want the air to move as fast as possible. And for a power source, um, they're they're normally powered by 24 volt AC um, circuit from a from an irrigation controller. But they don't need that. I've just got a, a just a regular 9 volt battery. And uh, you know, if you can, if you can hear that, if you can hear them clicking, they're working. So. Um, you know, just a regular nine volt battery will power it, or twelve volt, or anything up up, up to up to twenty four volt. Of course, if you have twenty four volts AC, you want to do that. But this is uh, this is quick and easy. Okay, so as I was saying, there there are some safety concerns here. You have to be aware. You've got you know, I, I run about uh, eighty psi in that in that chamber. That's about as much as I really feel comfortable doing. But you effectively got a bomb there, so you really have to. Um, you know, be aware and and, and do it uh, do it safely as you can. Just so just so uh, you know that that PVC pipe or any rigid um, plastic pipe is not rated for uh, for air or any any uh, any c compressed gas. Reason being that if it if it lets go, it's going to shatter. So you don't want to mess around with that if it's uh, beside your head when you're firing it off or, or your or your kid's head or grandkid's head so be aware of what what you're uh, what, what you're dealing with here and and uh, treat it will treat it with with respect um i use a schedule 40 uh pvc pipe you can see it here this is two inch schedule 40 pvc this is a fairly heavy wall pipe um, it's not the the, the cheap uh, irrigation stuff that you can get, which is uh, what is either scheduled or series one hundred and sixty or or, or two hundred. There, um, this is quite a bit heavier wall, and it's uh, and it's a lot stronger. Like I say, I'll I'll run this at maybe eighty psi. Um, it it it's uh, rated 
for water it's not rated for air with water is rated to uh, 280 psi so i'm sort of a third of that so i feel fairly safe and I, the uh, the actual burst pressure of this is probably i think it's close to about 900 psi so i feel fairly safe with that but having said that it, it's not rated for for compressed gases so um you know take your uh this is uh this is on all of us uh, individually as to what, what what we're comfortable with but please at least go schedule 40 uh schedule 80 is even better if if you have access to that but go 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 to your uh do a d decent uh irrigation supply store and ask for a piece of uh schedule 40. so when i'm gluing this stuff together i use both the cleaner and the which is a which is this uh this uh little, you know purple Purple uh, solvent and the and the solvent uh, solvent cement. The 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 cleaner again uh, is is uh, it's used. I think you get a better joint, a stronger joint if you use this. You don't absolutely need to. I, I've made joints w without it, but for this application, I would certainly use this this uh, this cleaner as well. It it, it does clean the uh, the PVC, but it also softens it and gives uh, uh, gives the glue a better bond to the to the uh, plastic so When you're gluing it together, you know you have to move fairly quickly so that the glue stays nice and nice and uh, nice and liquid. You get a better uh, better joint that way. It is a solvent. Whoop, it is a solvent glue, which means that it it actually uh, softens and uh, it gets absorbed into the plastic. And you usually have to hold them together for. A, few seconds until they set up or they sometimes they push out it's always a good idea to give them a twist too as you're putting it together which uh, um, helps them stay together better And the same on the other end. So for the Teflon tape, just take about um, uh, three or four turns of Teflon tape around here. Wind it in a clockwise manner so that way it won't come off when you're threading your fittings in. You don't have to do them real tight it's it's a um um you know we don't really care if it leaks a little bit so you got air pressure on it all the time so if it leaks a little bit doesn't matter i won't bore you with that anymore but i'll just uh finish putting in all the uh all the threaded bits so there it is completed here on here on the this end we've got the connection for uh for the air here um, and you somehow get up to the two inch. There's a two inch barrel, and here's the here's the valve in line. You just have to get from the one inch up to the two inch here. Uh, make sure you get the valve in the right uh, direction that the flow is going flow is going that way. Um, and there's the and there's the barrel. And I the the actual dimensions aren't aren't uh, very critical. I that's probably about uh, what is that. Two and a half feet, maybe three feet, uh, and this is probably around uh, around two feet long. So, the one thing I like to do is to put a um, 
a sort of a sharp edge on here so that when you shove the potato in here it makes a really nice cut it makes a nice uh nice edge on that so that it seals well on the inside of the of the uh of the barrel here so i just use a file and just take that off like that just to get a nice to get a nice edge on and then a nice edge on here so that uh you know so that you get a nice uh yeah i'll show you like that all right so after it's done i'd leave it for a couple hours to let the, the glue set up well um but then it's just a matter of you know taking the to get it in the airline. You, can, you hear that, that old valve leaking a little bit, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it's just leaking around the flange here. But it turns out I was mistaken. This uh, little nine volt battery doesn't have enough oomph to, uh, to pull the uh, solenoid if, uh, if there's pressure on it. So, so I've got this, uh, this little 12 volt here you can hear it firing without uh, just dry fire this the only other thing I've made that uh, sort of helps with the loading is just a stick with a screw or a nail in it that allows you to to load the potato in and not push it into the valve so it so it stops about here so that the, the potato charge sits, sits down here close to the valve and another thing i've done just to help loading it is to drill a really small hole right there right close to the valve because otherwise so it sometimes happens you get a tight seal on the potato you try and push it down here the air is trapped and it and it the the, the potato won't push down so if you just let a little tiny hole there and not not enough to bleed off the air pressure when the valve goes off but just enough to let the air out when you when you're pushing the potato up to the up to the valve here so then to load it of course here's your potato push it in there close to the so you get a nice tight seal all the way around push that down you're ready to go I don't know if you caught that, but it actually goes right through. That's the power this thing has. See that came out the other side. That's a piece of three eighths plywood with a potato. Unbelievable what the power these things have. All right, folks, that's what I uh, have for you today. Um, that was fun. Um, as you can see, it uh, there's a ton of energy coming out of this thing that. Uh, are generated by this thing to put a piece of uh, potato through a piece of uh, 3 8 plywood you can imagine the velocity that must be here so that's what I was interested in and that's why I built this and in our next video we're gonna try and uh, calculate a way I've, I've got a few ideas for a way to way to calculate the uh, the, the muzzle velocity coming out of this thing so um, yeah anyway that's the what my next video next week is going to be um, so uh, check on back for that. Uh, in the meantime, please uh, subscribe and like and uh, share it with friends. I'd appreciate that. And uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.